Welcome to The Detail. I am your host, Kathy Antunes, and you are listening to The Detail on WSLR 96.5 LPFM in Sarasota, Florida, and WBPV 100.1 LPFM in Bradenton, Florida. Well, the Florida legislature has been um, up to a lot this, this legislative season, but one thing that has solar advocates alarmed is HB 741. It's a bill that seeks to kind of upend reimbursement for solar and also what can be charged by utilities to uh, customers that are selling their energy back or people who have solar rooftops. So with me today is Dave Jenkins. Dave is the president of Conservatives for Responsible Stewardship. stewardship. Um, so Dave, thank you so much for being with me today to talk about this issue. Yeah, thank you for having me. I, I wanna start actually with the name of your organization. So this is pretty much a, a nonpartisan issue, isn't it? Both conservatives and you know, liberals alike or you know, both sides of the aisle, there's a lot of um, support for solar energy, right? Well, yeah, and especially when you're talking about rooftop solar, it's the ability of people to have the, the freedom to produce their own power, <clears throat> get out from under the thumb of the utilities, mm -hmm. um, be more energy independent. And, um, and that introduces actually competition into a system right now that's basically doesn't have it because of all the monopoly utilities and mm. their captive customer bases. So yes, conservatives should absolutely love um this and most uh, many do and a most lot of, of people do. yeah yeah right. a lot of people uh around the country are completely off the grid using uh solar panels yeah it kind of reminds me um this is when i was a kid in the breakup of ma bell and the communications there was some pain there but ultimately was better for everyone you know mm -hmm. in terms of access to communications um but and and I know in California, there's a similar bill, but we'll get to that later, but they called this kind of approach basically a tax on the sun. Um, so that energy freedom approach is, is pretty compelling to most people. Um, Dave, can you walk us through, this is House Bill 71. Um, it ultimately became law, right? Uh, no, it's, it's actually- or No, it's not. <clears throat> okay, yeah. sorry about that. Please fill yeah. fill me in then, because it's not been signed by DeSantis yet. Correct. Okay. Uh, it's it's HB seven forty one, and mm -hmm. um, it was actually written by uh, FPL lobbyist, uh, mm -hmm. Florida Power mm -hmm. and Light lobbyist, and then it was introduced by um, by two lawmakers that, in sort of conjunction, got huge campaign contributions from FPNL's parent company. Sure. But it did. Yeah successfully passed the Florida legislature. And um, what, what's really, really bad is that, I mean, this was bad from the start, right? It was um, designed to further insulate utilities from free market competition. It was designed to kill rooftop solar. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was designed to give um, utilities more free reign to impose rate increases on customers. Um, but, you know, it was bad enough that that bill was designed to undermine the freedom of Floridians to produce their own, own electricity. Um, but lobbyists snuck in a huge subsidy in this bill during the process um, that gives utilities, and you got to follow this, unlimited power to raise your electric bill to make up for, and, and get this, projected revenue unrealized due to competition. In other words, <laughs> Anytime they think they're not making as much profit as they should, they can raise your rates to make up the difference. I uh, mean, it, yeah, I, you know, it, people scream about socialism, right? Isn't this really a form of propping up an industry through legal means? I mean, I, I don't, I can't see a better example of um, institutionalized corporate welfare. Yeah, it is exactly that. And uh, it, it's really Orwellian in a way because, uh, uh, you know, FPNL introduced or wrote, wrote this bill with the, uh, their excuse was this non-existent inequity that 
somehow the solar customers are going to have to be um, subsidized by other other uh, utility customers, mm -hmm. um, which is a fallacy, and we can go into that. But the thing is, is what they were complaining about or say that was an issue is actually what this bill creates. Hmm. I mean, that subsidy that was put in there creates the exact situation they originally claimed they were trying to prevent. Prevent for themselves, so like, you mean? Yeah, yeah. it's like the yeah. opposite of, of why they said the bill was there. They, it's like mm -hmm. saying you're wanting to get rid of something. And, and you're creating it. And you create it. I mean, it, mm -hmm. it's it's unbelievable. These are the <laughs> times. These are the times we live in, basically. OK, yeah. so just to unpack this for somebody who's totally unfamiliar. Right. We're all we've got our busy lives. Um, I think this is the sunshine state. I think a lot of people wonder why Florida isn't further along when it comes to solar power. Um, but. Tell me what net metering is and how it applies to this bill. Okay. Yes. And and just, just to your, your point about solar, yeah. <clears throat> Florida <clears throat> gets less than 3% of its energy from solar, whereas um, a much less sunny state like Vermont gets 14% uh, of its from solar. So it's it's really weird that Florida is so behind. Georgia even gets more, more from solar than Florida. But net yeah. metering uh, is essentially... <clears throat> Um, when, when you put roof, when you put solar panels on your home, um, you know, you make a lot of electricity during the day when the sun's shining. Mm -hmm. And, uh, one way people help finance their rooftop solar panels is that when they make excess electricity, that's more than they can use in their home, mm -hmm. they're able to sell it back to the utility. So it can be sold to other people mm -hmm. and <clears throat> net metering allows you to sell it at fair market value. In other words, the utility has to pay you fair market value for that electricity. Well, the utilities hate that because- They, they want to set the price. They're, they're in the business of selling electricity. They don't like to buy electricity. And mm -hmm. if they are going to buy it, they want to buy it at such a discounted rate that they can make plenty of profit. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> what this bill um, does is it, not only does it eliminate people's ability to uh, sell electricity for fair market value back to the grid, <clears throat> it lets the utility decide what that price needs to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They can price it as low as they want. It's something called avoided cost. So they, they calculate, oh, well, what, what are we saving by these people having solar panels on their roof? And then they come up with a calculation, whatever they want it to be. And then they say, this is how much we're going to give you for your solar power. So they're undercutting people's ability to finance that. Um, I mean, it's sort of like, you know, the feudal times where the king was going to give you whatever the heck he wanted for your grain, right? I yep. mean, it's pretty mercenary. Um, and if you, you know, you let a private company dictate the market, again, that's not, that's not capitalism. Yeah. So, so, the, <laughs> so that's net metering. And in addition to, to undercutting that, the bill provides for the utility to add on fees to people who have solar panels on their home. Like uh, one of so, the fees so is- we, let's, Let me just stop you there. So on the one hand, they want to dictate the price that they're going to pay, right? Mm -hmm. But then they want to be able to charge the people who are providing their own energy. Exactly. They want to, okay. they want to make it impossible for someone to make enough electricity that they don't have to pay the utility anything. So, so the bill provides for the option of uh, minimum monthly bills on solar customers, uh -huh. um, connection, grid connection fees. Now, um, this is really funny because all these people with solar panels on their home, before they put solar panels on their home, they're already connected to the grid. There is no additional connection that needs to happen. Because they're using regular energy. Yeah. So they're already so, connected. Okay. Yeah, the, 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 the energy can flow either way on that power line, but the, the only difference is the customer that has the rooftop solar has to buy a device that sends it back the other way. But that's the cost that the customer bears, not the utility. Right. So, okay. so this grid, the whole idea of a grid connection fee is just, it's just a, a punitive fee on people for putting solar panels in their home. They just want to be able to collect. Yeah. Um, how do you explain all right so you've got these two these these two pathways of of the utility company 
getting in the pocket of people who are using solar. One is they're reducing, they want to control the price that they pay for the excess solar going back into the system, which by the way, has benefits to the whole society producing energy this way, right? We're not going to be creating a carbon footprint. I mean, there is a public well, interest. Well, right? there's actually there's actually a positive for the utilities in that if you have enough people producing elect, some of their electricity on their own, that's less uh, generating mm -hmm. facilities that you have to build out and invest in in the future. You know, what uh, it also does, it's like a diversified portfolio. There's less risk to FPL, exactly. you know, because if, if one goes wrong, you know, they're, they're not all going to be um, compromised at the same time. And in a state with hurricanes, exactly, it's storm, beneficial. Yeah, it's resilient. It, it increases yeah. the resiliency of the grid. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. which any investor knows, you know, you don't put all your eggs in one basket, you spread out your investments. So it's no different. But, you know, the fact that we're not actually putting carbon in the air is a big benefit, too. Well, and people so, should also think about price. Um, right now, the, the energy markets changed dramatically over the last five years. Mm. And right now, solar electricity is cheaper than uh, the natural gas fired electricity. Really? Um, wow. Yeah. So, so even when the utilities are doing it, their so, solar facilities are selling electricity between 15 and $25 a megawatt hour. Natural gas generation is between 45 and $65 a megawatt hour, more than double. Um, and utilities wow. in Florida, especially like FPNL, you know, most of their energy production is natural gas. And that was a that was a loser economically before what happened in Europe, what's happening in Europe right now. Right. But with just to stop you there, but you know, the, the dependence of Europe on Russia's natural gas is a huge factor in what's going on in Ukraine right now. And it's going to mm -hmm. take time for Europe to, to get themselves off of Russia's pipeline of gas. Right. And how the, how they're planning to get off of it is through, imports of natural gas from the u.s liquefied natural gas mm. so that puts more demand on our supply so the price of natural gas here went from two dollars and something um million therm or whatever um to over almost five dollars mm. in just the last few months wow so 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 it's more than doubled that had about gas prices is out the window they're, they're going to go up sky high and if you're a utility uh -huh. and you're invested almost solely in gas, what's going to happen? You're going to mainline that additional fuel cost right back to your customer. customer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, just to deviate a little bit from Florida, this idea, you know, solar energy, when did that flip happen? Because, you know, I remember when Jimmy Carter put solar panels on the White House and everyone had such high hopes, but, oh, it's too expensive and you can't store it. And there were all these issues but it's totally changed now. When did it become cost effective, would you say? When did the technology finally get there? Yeah, Jimmy Carter was about 30 or 40 years ahead of his time there. Those solar panels mm -hmm. were so inefficient that uh, it basically cost $60 a watt. Wow, okay. So think about a 60 watt light bulb. <laughs> I'm a yeah. Well, I think um, he was, it was symbolic what he was doing, yeah, but it yes. Was symbolic. Yeah. But, mm -hmm. but today about, Five years ago is when we started seeing solar prices, and it's not just solar; it's solar plus storage. Okay. Battery because technology has came along. That was one of the issues. Yeah, yeah exactly. storage. Okay. So, so it started getting cheaper than gas uh, about five years ago. Okay. And and it's continued to decrease. Um, now, every state's not equal in terms of the the price of solar. You know, it kind of depends. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you're a sunny state like Florida you need to be comparing yourself to like Nevada, Arizona, Southern California yeah. and, uh, and New Mexico. And there was a um, solar facility in New Mexico went up and they sold, it's selling electricity for $15 a megawatt hour. And that's on a 20 year contract. In other words, they're guaranteeing $15 wow. a megawatt hour for the next two decades. Wow. Whereas if you're relying on gas, that price is going to keep going up and up and up. That's uh, so. So there at New Mexico is basically delivering solar power for the very best price right now, which is 15 bucks a megawatt hour. Yeah. 
And they're guaranteeing it for how for long? 30 20 years. 20 years. 20 mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So, so this now the technology is absolutely there and it is cost effective for, you know, putting, putting this government stuff aside and rigging the market. It's actually very effective, a cost well, effective for people. Yeah. Well, it, you know, on the conservative side, we've always say follow the market. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, there's no red energy or blue energy or left or right energy. I mean, mm -hmm. energy is energy. Right. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Right. Um, so if if we as conservatives are about following the market, we should listen to the market, irrespective of which energy source it's favoring at the time. Mm -hmm. And right now, it's favoring solar. It's favoring solar. It's favoring wind. It's actually favoring nuclear to to more of a degree than it used to. Yeah, uh, there are not, advances in nuclear now in terms of safety, aren't there? In, yeah. And, uh, new modular uh, reactors and stuff like that. But the um, uh, so the market is favoring those sources and from a, a price point and not favoring natural gas and coal. And the reason, one of the reasons it's not favoring natural gas and coal has nothing to do with the price of the natural gas and coal. It's that all the plants that use this mm -hmm. are old and they cost more to maintain and operate. There's a coal uh, plant. There's a coal plant in um, in the Four Corners area out in Arizona and Colorado hmm. that is selling electricity now. It costs to sell its electricity eighty five dollars a megawatt hour, wow. because the plant costs so much to keep running. So wow. if you have a choice, okay. So yeah, our utility can get its electricity and you know for eighty five dollars a megawatt hour or fifteen dollars a megawatt hour. Um, which do you think is going to help the electric customer more yeah. and in florida it's even worse because the utilities have this ability with the public service commission anytime there's an increase in natural gas prices they can just go to them and say our gas price increased we've got to increase our rates to our customers and it's rubber stamped by the psc wow okay so so we're looking at a situation there that you just described solar is seven times cheaper basically more in that even, situation, a bit yeah. more than that yeah um so so with these advances now in solar you know i remember driving in um i think i was up in massachusetts or connecticut i was up in connecticut massachusetts and i saw solar panels no it was massachusetts it, they were on the highway you know mm -hmm. as i was driving in massachusetts which is like obviously you know the amount not, of sun they get not the sunniest place in the world <laughs> yeah. is, is negligible i mean it's just so much less so yeah. um so obviously what would you say in terms of you said is vermont leading with 14 percent um well i mean they're they're, they're ahead of florida actually they're not the, the highest um who's the highest i think i think nevada 30 percent of their really? electricity is um uh solar and you know it's interesting that uh, they passed a renewable energy standard bill in Nevada uh, a couple years ago, and it got 100% support in the legislature. Every single Republican voted for it. Every single Democrat voted for it. And mm -hmm. you know why? They looked at the cost. They're saying, they actually looked at why, the numbers, huh? Yeah. Why, why, why would we import this natural gas for our electricity when it's going to go up in price and mm -hmm. we can make this homegrown inside our own state? not subject to any world global conflicts or anything. Right. Um, we can make it here for cheaper. Why wouldn't we do wow. that? And so and they did it. Yeah, they did it. Yeah. They and it, and it's, did it's, it. they've got to have a, it's going to be 50% by 2030. Really? And here's Florida, sunshine state, sitting down here at less Second than Second wind, right? We're, we're in, yeah. Okay. You know, um, in, in the re some of the reading I looked at, there was in California, a similar effort that has stalled uh, California net energy metering 3.0 is what someone referred to their bill as. And I, I really, um, I like the phrase that was being used to oppose it. It's called calling it a tax on the sun. I mean, this is a disruptive technology. It's clean, it's now so efficient. Um, I guess we, we really can't expect that these companies are gonna welcome it. You know, yeah, well, it's 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 pretty amazing that uh, that Florida's legislature 
is trying to push the same kind of thing that you know wacky california you know is, is yeah is exactly there. um but um uh, yeah the you know the utilities there just like the here they have they have a lot of clout they grease you know they grease people's palms in terms of campaign donations and but california has been a basket case on energy not because of solar um but because at the same time they were incentivizing solar they were incentivizing natural gas and so what they did they got all this new capacity yeah. built in solar and natural gas but they didn't have enough customers to buy all that electricity they're generating they actually oh, outpace so they selling it now or they outpace supply so they're actually giving electricity to states like arizona and nevada because hmm. they don't have anywhere to sell it wow um and so what, what, what that a does, waste though all that natural gas investment right but that raises the cost for people in california because you're dividing that plant's production over fewer people oh okay and so that's the mess they've got there and it's it's completely unrelated to to what's happening in florida but yeah the uh uh the notion that people go after you know solar is, is just crazy because solar is actually their best path out of uh those big cost increases they need to be retiring some of these old natural gas plants yeah so dave let me just read um will i think his name is geis g-i-e-s-e -E, southeast regional director of solar energy industries association so you know this is his industry uh but referring to uh hb 741 which governor DeSantis has not signed yet so there's mm -hmm. there's time to pull this out of the uh out of the ashes here um, and, and get him get him to back off. Uh, Mr. Guy says, this bill is a nightmare for anyone who believes in energy freedom and the rights of people to choose the energy that works for them and their families. Net metering has helped over 100,000 Florida homeowners make that choice. And utilities are now banking on the state government to strip those rights away and pad their monopoly hold on electricity. Florida has seen its solar energy um, industry grow to employ 11,000 people and generate over 10 billion in economic activity. States that enact bad legislation like this will see much of that business growth disappear. And we're urging Governor DeSantis to veto the bill and maintains Florida's place as a national energy leader. Well, I don't know if that's true, but this is a <laughs> simple, solar, anyway. Yeah, yeah, right. This is a simple choice between helping the monopolies and helping the people. Um, well, and his economic yeah. argument is really uh, on point because what we're seeing in states that are have higher solar and renewable generation in their portfolio is that they're getting a lot of businesses come there and start up. Hmm. Because really? a lot of company, yeah, companies, one, they have a lot of them have their own carbon footprint goals. So they're going to gravitate yeah. to places mm -hmm. that will help them meet that goal. Mm -hmm. The other thing is cost. If solar is the cheapest form of energy, they don't want to go to a place that's all like completely married to, to natural gas or coal that's higher cost of energy. Yeah, that's um, just going to gonna hurt their bottom line, their overhead. Right. So what you're going to see is less business investment in the state of Florida because of this legislation. It's going to go to Arizona. It's going to go to Nevada. Maybe it's even going to Vermont. <laughs> but, mm -hmm. uh, but, yeah. so, but, but the Sunshine State is missing out on the biggest developments in solar ever. And, uh, and solar is finally where it needs to be as a, as a source of energy. And yet Florida is, is just nowhere to be found less than three percent and yeah. and you know while you, fpnl will claim oh we add more solar than anybody else well the thing is is if you look at the amount of solar they add compared mm -hmm. to their the size of their customer base yeah it's peanuts and it never gets bigger it's always like one percent or two percent the share of the pie you mean it yeah just it never grow. gets bigger it never gets bigger. So they're so just kind of keeping it in this. They're keeping it. In this, they, they add more because they've got a huge customer base, but they're not getting a greater percentage of this. So they're not diversifying their portfolio. Well, here, if Nevada is at 30%, they're going to be at 50% when? In how many? By 2030. 
-hmm. by 2030, so eight years away. And here we are so behind, uh, behind the curve. Dave, what do you say to Floridians right now? What do we need to do to ensure that our government moves forward with solar, well, supporting well, the, solar? Yeah, priority number one is to get Governor DeSantis to veto HB 741. Okay. Uh, so the, the way I see it, you know, Governor DeSantis has a choice. He can be a genuine pro-capitalism conservative, like he, 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 like he says you know, he is, says he is yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> or he, or he can join the, the legislature and be a pansy for monopoly utilities that are committed to squashing any and all competition mm -hmm. and joining that. It's, it's not capitalism. It's more like a mob protection racket, but he can't yeah, be no. both. He, he can't be both. You can't be a pro-capitalism conservative and sign this bill. Right. It, the two are diametrically opposed. Yeah, well, and I think this is, you know, that we're even in this position is just more evidence of the influence of money in politics and how, you know, unless we change it, unless people start really understanding who, and who they're voting for, what the issues are, and, you know, this, this is a no-brainer. Across the aisle, uh, Democrats, I, I think the numbers I saw was that 74% of people who I say they're Republicans support this. And with the Democrats, it's like 94% in one mm. survey that was done. I mean, there is vast support for energy freedom through solar. And if, if our governor or even in the state legislature um, to have done this, but if the governor signs on, they're really showing us who they are. Well, yeah, they're, they're completely in the pockets of, of FPNL. And, uh, you know, FPNL is uh, uh, when they, they got a huge rate increase, well, all the utilities in Florida got a huge approved for a huge rate increase back in the fall. Mm -hmm. And $20 million of uh, FPNL's rate increase is for them to pay their uh, industry association dues, which is basically their lobby part of their lobby. So wow. they're able to charge customers $20 million to underwrite their own lobbying their costs lobbying. to try to pass bills like this. Not just That's pass, how bad they write is. them. They're writing them. Yeah, they're right. Well, yeah, not they're actually, actually they actually wrote it. Yeah, <laughs> you know, so they actually wrote it. It's it's cool. horrible. I mean, who's mm -hmm. representing everybody else if everybody's in the pocket of FPNL? Mm -hmm. Right. And it's, it's a fundamental need of everybody in our society. There's, you know, obviously, even if for those people who may not be convinced about climate change, my gosh, it's cheaper, it's efficient, it's clean. Why wouldn't you do it? You know, and and yeah. obviously the reason is you've got a, a very entrenched special interest monopoly that doesn't. <laughs> what what well, a surprise! They don't want to lose their money. So well, and they don't they don't care how much they pay for gas or anything like that because they're able to pass that right on to the customer. Right. Yeah. If this was a free market where they had to compete with another utility, then they would care about that because they would want to keep their prices low to attract customers. They don't right. have to worry about that. Well, if it were a free market, they'd all be investing in solar. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Dave Jenkins, thank you so much uh, for being with me. And if people want to find out your organization, you are the president of Conservatives for Responsible Stewardship. I love that name. Uh, where can they find out more about your organization? Uh, our website is uh, www.conservativestewards.org. And uh, we're also on Facebook and Twitter. So look us up. Um, okay. But yeah, we are what we... The name says who we are. Yeah, I mean, you know, mm -hmm. our, we have, we have twenty thousand members nationwide. We have six thousand in Florida, and um, we're all conservatives who care about conservation and stewardship. And if you think about it, conservation or conserve and conservative, they all come from the same. It's all from the same. They root do. Word. They come from the same. They they have the same meaning. Well, mm -hmm. I so appreciate people like you and the work that you do. Um, that we have you know, reliable experts who are truly advocating for the public interest, who can kind of lead the way. Um, and so, and who we can trust. So Dave Jenkins, thanks again for being on the show. Thank you for having me. It's been fun.
So everyone, if you've just joined me, you are listening to the detail on WSLR 96.5 LPFM in Sarasota, Florida, and WBPV 100.1 LPFM in Bradenton, Florida. If you'd like to get in touch with Governor Ron DeSantis about this, uh, which is HB 741 um, regarding the solar industry, you can contact him. You go to the state website. It's flgov.com forward slash contash dash governor. On this or any other issue, you can write to him. Uh, the address is Office of Governor Ron DeSantis, State of Florida, the Capitol, 400 South Monroe Street, Tallahassee, Florida, 32399 001. The phone number for De Governor DeSantis is 850-717-9337. And you can find so much information about what's going on in our government and how to uh, be in touch with them at flgov.com. Be sure to stay tuned. I'm going to be talking to Bill Johnson, who is the proprietor of Brilliant Harvest. He is a local solar energy entrepreneur and we're gonna be talking about HB 741 and its impact on our local economy. Stay tuned. <laughs> 